Cosisco, can you still speak French? We. Oui. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I'm Young Gerald. No, Cosisco. And let's see what you guys had to ask about it. Let's take a gander. Cosisco, how did you meet Jeezy? <laughs> Damn, the first time? I think it was South by Southwest. Mm. 2012. Yeah. Me and my boy Joe were about to go play, I think it was the Viceland showcase. I think when we were walking there, like my boy knew him and saw him and we walked up and said, what's up? Yeah, I mean, we, we grew up with a lot of the same people, so we had a lot of mutual friends and stuff. So I was kind of like, but I think me and Kosi are both kind of like naturally like introverts and a little bit shy, you know? Mm -hmm. it's it, like, it's just naturally in our personas. Like, of course you kind of can like, like acquire the skill set of being able to be social because you have to be for an artist. But I think me and him are both naturally pretty reserved. And so I, I was like, I was up on his music before I even knew him, just from seeing him around and being like, yo, this cat has this crazy look. He went by a different alter ego than um, Hunted's. And he had this ice cold perm, man. He had the trench coats, man. It was, it was, it was a crazy was look, you know what I mean? It was, yeah. and the music was fire and all my homies were talking about the music. And I was like, I have to meet this cat. And then the first time I met him, he just stayed back in the corner and didn't say nothing. I was like, damn, man, he's so cool, man. <laughs> Guy didn't even talk to me. All right. What's it like collaborating together on so many great tracks? I'm just grateful, you know? Ever since the first session we did, which I think was Boss Tycoon. Yeah, wow. You know what I'm saying? We just always, we just got that chemistry. Mm -hmm. So every time we get in the studio and we're just aligned, just cool shit happens. And we got so much shit that hasn't come out and may never come out, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But we just enjoy working together. No, I would say the same, man. I mean, I, I'm, I for one, I've always loved collaborating. I think that, probably just initially grew out of me just starting making beats. So I was like limited in my skill set. So anybody who could sing or, you know, who, who else could rap or could write songs, you know what I mean? I was eager to work with. And then I, you know, I got to, to New Orleans in college where I started meeting musicians and people who could play instruments. And I love, I can't play guitar, but the kid down the hall can. And I'd be like, yo, can you play this part that I hear? And just the spirit of collaboration. And, you know, I'm I'm such a fan of music and I can like identify in people who I can appreciate their like abilities and skills as being like, damn, like that's that's like magic to me because I can't do what you do. You know, so anytime I work with him, it's like he has a completely different process, approach and skill set than I do, you know, when it comes to the music. So when I hear him sing on something or you know, do this thing and I'm like, damn, that's so tight because that's not something I could do. And we just find ways to make it work together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is G-Eazy's favorite city to perform? Uh, that's gotta be, I mean, Bay Area for sure, home, but sometimes playing shows at home can get stressful. Mm -hmm. You got friends and family, like blowing the you guest up the guest list. list, it's hell. Um, I mean, getting to, I mean, like, anywhere like London, Paris, Tokyo, you know, just for the fact of getting to go to these places, but my favorite place, man, has got to be Minnesota. Yeah, Minnesota's crazy. Yeah, yeah in terms okay. of just the fans, the energies, it's just, it's crazy out there. So big love to Minnesota. Do you guys have a favorite track or tracks of each other's? One you haven't worked on together? Oh man, because I was going to say Running Wild. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, I would say it was not out yet. Okay. The new stuff you're working on. That's just yeah. pretty far. I mean, A, that's a general rule of thumb. like. I'm always the most excited about new stuff because it's just, it's fresh and it's there. But I, I say that in all seriousness, like that one song, that one, one, one that you got, that's, 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 that's that one, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah. that's that one. So y'all have to wait and see on that. But you got that one too. Yeah. So, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know? Yeah. New stuff on the way, man. Yeah, it's all new. The song he's referring to, it's it's uh it's actually a tribute I did for my mom. So I'm excited to put that out. It's called Angel. Where did Cosisco grow up? I grew up in the Bay, in Berkeley specifically. It, it was crazy, it was fun as fuck. Like I was just always just doing chaotic shit, you know? So me and my friends, we went out to, to Hunter's Point, right? And there was this just this tunnel, right? That like some of our other homies told us about. So we go and we're like hitting it up. And then we see this car come, it's like a regular car, so we're like, oh shit. And this dude comes out, he's like a, he was an undercover cop. He's like, oh, what you guys doing? We're like, oh no, nah, man, we're just chilling here, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll just leave you guys alone. I, I thought you were doing something else. So we're like, oh, he's gone, he leaves. We're like, yeah, fucking idiot. We go back, 
Man, like five cars come around. Woo, woo, woo. That was woo. it. Yeah. They fucking pinned us on the ground and hell of shit. And like, I think our moms had to pick us up. She was furious. Like, <laughs> Uh, the Bay's always been really colorful and really, really just rich culturally in the sense of, you know, you have all these different wide sides of culture and, you know, it's very expressive and it's very, um, it's very unique, man. It's hard to describe, but, you know, around the time of mid 2000s when I was starting to make music, it was like, you know, E40 and Keith don't tell me when to go. Mac Dre had recently passed. You know, it was just, it was a, it was like this you know, vibrant but wild, crazy time in music and culture, side shows, you know. Man, it was it was a wild time, but, you know, like, culturally, I mean, the, the stuff we were doing as kids, sneaking out of the house in the middle of the night, going out, getting in trouble, you know, it was just a wild time, like, um, I think I think one of the best things that happened for me was, was moving away to New Orleans. My mom was just like, nope, like, you getting, you getting out of here, like, I was headed down a path, but, um, but music was always the thing that kind of like was the glue that kept a lot of things together. I was always into the music and that kept me out of enough trouble. So, you know, we spent enough days in the afternoon, like, you know, at my house recording, I was making beats, you know, and anytime we were inside, no matter how much noise we were making, my mom was like, at least they're not outside getting in trouble. So, you know, man, Bay Area in the mid 2000s, you had to be there. We were hyphy. Cosisco, can you still speak French? Oui. <laughs> je, je peux toujours oui, parler je, de français. Je m'appelle Gerald. What about you? Can you still speak French? Je, oui. Oui? Oui. Okay. There Bonsoir. <laughs> Bonne nuit. Cosisco, <clears throat> what advice would you give to your younger self? Probably like, don't smoke cigarettes. Like, I started smoking cigarettes and I was like, fucking 11 or some shit. That's what I would tell him. Like, bro, go run. Go do some other shit. <laughs> do literally anything else than that, you know? Man, I would have told my younger self, I know you're about to put that 5X tall T on and then that 4X <laughs> tall T, but just don't do it. Just don't, man. Just three sizes north, there's one that might fit you a little, your silhouette a little bit better, man. Just don't do that. Just have fun. Yeah. It's gonna be all right. Cusisco, mm -hmm. what has been the most valuable, pivotal lesson in your career given the pandemic over the last couple of years? Do, do, like focus on what I want to do, you know? Like tune shit out, it doesn't matter what, what else is going on in the world and just always do what the fuck I want to do and make sure I'm having fun doing it, you know what I mean? The pandemic was a difficult time. Uh, for me, somebody who is used to like touring nonstop, it was really hard just being disconnected from my fans in that type of way. Um, but the valuable lesson was just to like, you know, improvise and innovate and, and find new ways to express yourself and, you know, and challenge yourself and just step outside of the usual, step outside of the norm and break the cycle and just try new things. I think that was the biggest thing is like, I was so caught in the cycle of constantly working that as soon as the world kind of stopped, I was like, oh, I have a chance to do something new for once. Try something new, you know, so it was cool. How tall is Kosisko? 6'4". Yeah. Uh, g -Z is also 6'4". <laughs> if you could live anywhere else in the world, not the Bay, where would it be and why? Probably like, I mean, it's like a fantasy because like I'm thinking, so I play it out of my head like, I'm trying to live in New Zealand or somewhere like that. But I'm like, okay, you get to New Zealand, you live in some rural cabin, it'd probably be horrible after like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in my head, I'm like somewhere like that, like New Zealand or just somewhere, like some Lord of the Rings shit, you know. Or I'd just be in the elements and it'd just be hella quiet and peaceful. What about you? I mean, besides the Bay, I would do New York, mm -hmm. like downtown New York or Paris. Or New Zealand. Yeah, pull up on New Zealand. Who is your musical inspiration? My musical inspiration, man, everything from Johnny Cash to Mac Dre to, man, Red Hot Chili Peppers to, you know, E-40, Jay-Z, um, to Danny Elfman, to yeah. Tribe Called Quest, man, Hans Zimmer, Chet Baker. I mean, I just, I mean, Beethoven, <laughs> I just, I listen to a lot of stuff. Yeah, what about mm -hmm. you? Um, I could probably answer it for you. What you gonna say, Mac Dre, David Bowie? Yeah, it's Bowie, yeah. Mac Dre, <laughs> Prince. <laughs> Rick James, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, Daft Punk. Snoop. Snoop, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Those are kind of like the, Mount Rushmore for me.
Jeezy, now that live music is coming back, what will you miss most about being home all this time? Just being home all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was one of those things where I hated it at first, and it was so hard for me to adjust, and then I kind of settled in, and, oh, man, I'm just, I'm gonna just watch every show ever <laughs> on this couch and just order me some food and just post up, man. It was kind of nice, but nah, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm hella grateful just to be back outside. Same, just, just binging hella shows that I never would have asked, you know. What's Kosisko's birthday? What's Kosisko's birthday? November 26th. Sag Energy. What's your favorite food? My favorite food, man, I love noodles. Whether that's Italian cuisine, whether that's, you know, Thai cuisine. Um, no, nah, I mean, some, you know, some good carbonara, some good, you know, al dente fettuccine, Alfredo, you know. Um, <laughs> Man, I do love me some pasta. Probably like African food, like from the Ivory Coast. Like this shit called acheque and like rice and fish and just shit like that. It's super hard to get it here, but when I get it, it's like, oh, this is, you know what I mean? It's the best thing I've ever had. I, I love, I love some breakfast food. Like, like just classic crispy hash guy. browns, crispy hash browns, two eggs over easy and some breakfast sausage and some bacon. I'm good to go, man. What's your favorite song right now? Man, my favorite song right now is the unreleased song by Kosi. Damn. Probably the, the World of Trouble remix I got. Oh, yeah. I got this remix of this song I got with this African dude named Fior de Bior. And it's just like, I'm just excited. Would, will you do more acting? Loved your performance of Superficial and Sex Life. Oh, uh, thank you. Hell yeah. I love acting, you know? It's like, I think it's similar to doing music, you know? Because yeah. it's built in anyway, because like music videos and all that shit, it's like you're trained anyway to act, you know what I mean? So yeah, I mean, I hope to do more in the future. I love it. What about you? No, acting is for sure. I mean, I think it's just, it's it's one and the same almost in a sense. It's just different, different ways of expressing yourself, different characters to get into, different moods and mindsets and emotions to be able to convey and express. And, you know, so in that sense, it is similar to music. Um, you can just, you know, fully like immerse yourself inside a role, depending on it, you know, and like become that. Um, definitely excited about the prospect of acting. Of acting. Yeah, it's like it's like cool to, because when you're an artist, you just play yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Nah, acting is like you get to like wrap yourself around a whole different identity and character. Mm. Fuse. This is G Easy. And I'm Cosisco. Thank you guys all for the questions. Much love. We're about to get up out of here. And I hope you guys learned some amazing stuff about us.